Hello everyone and welcome back to Journey to Med. If you are new here, my name is Hazel and my name is Liddy and we are two second year medical students who have just finished their exams and are about to go into third year. In today's video we're going to be talking about our top 10 tips to survive preclinical medicine and I'm so excited to share that there will be timestamps down below in the description box so go crazy with the different chapters that we have. Before we get started make sure you all go down below and smash the like button because we can pretty much guarantee that you're going to absolutely love this video. You teasing me, you naughty naughty. Our first few tips are going to be about advice and expectations. Tip one is to manage your expectations. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, preclinical medicine is like when a majority of your learning is based off of lectures and not really having exposure in hospital or on the ward. So the reason why I say manage expectations is because when we apply to medicine, and I'm pretty sure when a majority of you are applying to medicine, you have this whole ideology that the minute you get into medicine, you're gonna be in the hospital saving lives and wearing a white lab coat. And that is just not the case. Well, duh. They can't exactly put you in the hospitals or the wards if you don't know half of the content you have to know, yeah. if you haven't been taught important things like patient safety and so on. So yeah, just be aware of this so that you're not disheartened. Our second tip, which is so, so important, is to understand that it takes time to get with the flow of what medical school is like. This means that it's probably going to take you some time to understand exactly what's going on, to wrap your head around the different modules, to pick how you're going to revise, and that is okay. This is something that really concerned me at the start of first year because I was kind of like, why don't I know what's going on? Am I going to fail? <laughs> but that is not the case. Don't be so dramatic. Just understand that you're all in the same boat and you're all going to figure it out together. Tip three would be to take everyone's advice with a pinch of mm. salt. I feel like when you're entering medical school, there are so many different sources mm. of information, which is all amazing, but sometimes it can get a tad bit overwhelming. Just the time. So what I would say is be very careful about exactly what you're consuming, which advice you decide to leave, and which advice you decide to actually apply. Whether you're consuming blog posts or YouTube videos, I think it's always important to keep in mind that everyone is different. Mm. Everyone consumes information differently. Every course at different medical schools is different. It. just take this in and don't put too much pressure on yourself if you're not exactly mimicking that youtuber you've seen if you're not exactly mimicking that person who seems to have their life together so guys that is the end of this chapter and before we move on to our next chapter be sure to smash that red button down below yeah. and subscribe to journey for men our next few tips are going to be your absolute favorite work and revision this one is definitely easier said than done but tip number four is to try and stay on top of your lectures and not be last minute. When you're not on top of your lectures and you're always rushing to get work done, you feel like everything's piling up and you actually don't have control over your life and your studies. And that is not the case you want to be in. So please, please, please try and stay on top of your lectures. So what I would do is if I had three lectures on one day, let's say, I'll try and make my notes for that lecture on the same day. But this is definitely not as easy to do because some lectures are so much harder than others. But if you have that expectation for yourself at least you can work towards it so tip five most of us probably know this but just as a cheeky reminder when you have internal exams or you may have mocks to do take them seriously yes. i know a lot of people kind of shrug it off and go it's fine these aren't the finals i'm not gonna bother for them Bruh. even though they don't count towards anything i feel like they're really good sources of practice and honing down on exactly what you don't know so i think when you have those mocks coming up take them seriously yeah. revise as though they were your finals so that you can put yourself in the best situation possible possible when exam season comes around the corner. Tip number six is to remember that sometimes you can get demotivated and that is okay. In situations like this, it is important to seek support from your friends, your family, your flatmates, even your lecturers and support systems that are available at your university because you don't want to be going through it yourself. Just remember that everyone has those days, everyone gets demotivated, but it's just important to try and pick yourself back up and get back on track. The next and final chapter that we'll be touching on is social life and experiences. Our seventh tip is to network. Guys, networking is so important mm. to meeting friends, increasing your knowledge, and essentially just understanding what's out there in the world. Make yourself uncomfortable and go for those experiences, go for those opportunities that you usually wouldn't do. Medical school is really what you make it. Network, discover people, make a LinkedIn, put yourself out there, and you'll be surprised what opportunities come knocking at your door. Networking doesn't always mean that you know you need to run and 
bloody make a YouTube channel. Yeah, That's yeah. not for everyone. But just networking and finding friends is, is still a thing, you know? Tip number eight is to do what you want and do it for yourself and not others. Some people might be in five societies, other people might have three part-time jobs, but if that's not for you, it's not for you and that's okay. Don't force it. Exactly, don't force it. Again, other people might be into going out, you might be into staying at home and reading a book. That is okay. Don't force yourself to do things you don't want to do because you see other people doing it. Don't force yourself to do things you don't want to do because you think it's the right thing to do or the cool thing to do. Genuinely, just do what you want. Yeah. Our ninth and penultimate tip is to live life for yourself. Yeah. Guys, you are only young once. Make memories, go crazy, live your life. Like, as much as people think medicine is a nine to five job, which it totally mm. isn't, no. you can squeeze in time to do things you love. You can squeeze in time to go traveling with your friends you can squeeze in time to do whatever you want honestly life is what you make it and don't allow being a medical student to restrict you on doing anything i think when we came out of that mentality that's when we truly started thriving and that is one of the main reasons why i enjoyed second year more than first year because first year i was like yeah i need to work 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 and then have fun like once a month that's not the case, mate. We go out to eat and then we do our work. Yeah. We watch our lecture and then we go meet a friend. Like, yeah. you can do both. And definitely. I think it definitely makes your experience better as well. Our last and final tip, tip 10, is to take initiative. It can be quite demotivated in first and second year when you don't have much clinical exposure and you're just doing lectures over lectures over lectures. Boring! But you can change this. Email your lecturers, email doctors and ask for experience and see what they can provide you with. It's not always going to work out, but it's worth a chance. And why not? You have nothing to lose. Obviously, because of the current climate, this might not always be possible, mm. but we've literally spoken to medical students that were like, I emailed this doctor, I emailed this lecturer, and he let me shadow this amazing experience yeah. at the hospital. So take initiative, take matters into your own hands if you want a bit more clinical exposure. And you'll be surprised once again Again, at the opportunities that open up to you but yes yeah, so I think that's it that's how you survive your first and second years of medical school just like we did if you guys are interested in a more in-depth chit chat about how we found second year and essentially preclinical medicine then make sure that you check out our review of second year medicine and hopefully the thumbnail should be on the screen somewhere somewhere Go check it out guys but yeah that is about it thank you all so so much for watching this video I do hope you found it useful I think we dropped a few gems if I do say so myself but yeah that is about it make sure you guys like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in a new video next time bye, bye.